Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're taking a look at the CAT-01. It's a ninja cat themed mecha and it's pretty awesome. I was very pleasantly surprised at how really nice this kit is and I can't wait to share with you guys in today's review. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right guys, starting off taking a look at the box. It's not a very big box, but it's definitely got some cool artwork here on the front with the name there, CAT01, and then some really cool artwork there of the kit itself. I like that not only do you have like the cool lighting effects and all that going on, but also the decals that you can see there as part of the illustration work on the front. And yes, this is apparently in 160 scale, but don't get it confused. Obviously, it's not like going to be anything like a perfect grade Gundam, anything quite that large. I'm guessing this is probably going to be about the same size as like your standard kind of HG Gundam kit. But taking a look at the bottom of the box here, you can see the front and back of the kit all painted up and decaled up and everything. It's just got loads of weapons on here, it looks like. So it's got arm, head, the feet design all looks very cool. All the throw weapons, the little knives and tail and all that good stuff. So. Lots of stuff going on here with this design. And here on the top of the box, some more information there in Chinese and in English, so if you want to read that. And then just a look at the front of the design and the pilot character there, which is pretty cool. I do really like that design. It'd be cool if they came out with like a resin figure or something like that of the pilot to go along with this. That'd be awesome. But let's go ahead, pop open the box, see what all we've got in here. So even though the box is not very big, it does seem to be pretty well packed with a fair amount of stuff. We'll start off here just taking a look at the manual. So you just got the same artwork right there on the front, a nice reference image here on the back for painting and decals. That's good to have that to be able to refer to. On the inside, we got some more information and artwork there. A lot of the same stuff we saw on the outside of the box, but there's even more information and stuff going on inside here as well. A lot of interesting illustration work and like background information about the mecha which is very interesting. Party time, for sure. But then the next page is just going to be getting into a parts list and the construction. So that will go for a few pages, not too much. And then once we get back here to the back, here's your decal layout guide there for you and color guide here as well. So some more reference images and then the painting guide down there at the bottom. Another interesting thing included in here is this kind of mini poster, which is pretty awesome there. Unfortunately, we don't have that actual scarf, but it shows it here on the back as well. So I don't know if that was maybe something that was available separately. Ah, no, it is in here. Just had to find it. So it's kind of wrapped up in there. We'll take a look at that here in just a second. So I guess that's special equipment for cats. So it's special equipment is going to be that scarf, which I believe is probably like a first run exclusive or something like that. We also have a foil sticker sheet with some stickers there that you're going to need to use for the colors on this, I guess. And here's your water slide decal. So they even have them separated out for like head, arm, legs, arms, as in like weapons there. So that's kind of cool how they have them separated out here on the decal sheet. All right, so first off, here's a look at the white rubber coated wire that we have here for the tail. So that looks pretty nice. And then here is the scarf. And this one also has a wire running through it so that you can form this to make it look a bit more dynamic. And it looks pretty cool. I gotta say, especially how they like designed this or how they made it so that it kind of looks like it's a bit charred there on the edges. It looks cool. The A runner here is going to be some parts in dark blue. Runner B is going to be here in a medium gray color. Runner C is in a very bright and shiny coated silver. That looks really cool. Runner D is some parts there in white. Runner F is in this deep kind of burgundy red color. Looks pretty cool. Runner F is also in gray for some mechanical joint type pieces there. Runner G is another runner here in dark blue. Runner H, we've got two of some more gray pieces here. And lastly, runner I, we have two of some more white pieces. And all right, guys, here's how the kit is going to look when it's all built up. I got to say, it's a really interesting feeling kit. It really, once it's all put together, everything feels so solid and has a really nice weight to it. It almost feels like an action figure now rather than a model kit. So that it feels really good in hand, like working with the kit, posing the kit. You guys will see some more posing options here in a little bit. But it's a very solid feeling little kit. I'm not sure if the aesthetic is still really too much to my personal taste, but it works really well. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. 
So first off on the stickers, you have a couple of gray stickers up here in the ears. Obviously these purple ones right here, red ones for the eyes, red ones for these circle bits right there. And on the notice stickers, when you're putting them on, they feel like kind of thick and they don't really feel like they're going down very well. But if you press them on really well, then they actually get some really nice adhesion there and they seem to work quite well. You just kind of have to really press them on. But aside from the couple little stickers here and there, overall the color separation is quite nice. You do have some nice accents of silver and red kind of between these different parts. So it's all pretty cool. For the articulation, the head will go up to there, down to about there. So not a huge range of articulation up and down, but side to side, you're not going to have any trouble with that. Here in the stomach section, you do have a pretty nice ab crunch, forward and back side to side there as well and some rotation no issues with that at the shoulder joint this whole side part will kind of swing out like so for a nice forward movement of that shoulder upwards you can move the shoulder armor up and then bring the arm up again it all feels pretty nice and tight solid there that goes up to a little bit more than 90 degrees perpendicular to the body otherwise just some rotation there at the bicep a nice joint here and the elbow is going to give you a pretty good full bend there wrist is just on the ball joint Going around here to the back, this tail, of course, is posable on this nice thick gauge wire. No skirting armor to speak of, so the legs won't be inhibited by that at all. You can move those every way very nicely. And you have two joints here, a knee joint and then a kind of like reverse joint there. So you have some good range of movement there in the knee. The foot is just on a ball joint, so you can move that around easily. This little bit of armor here at the front of the ankle also will move up and down. No like uh, folding or like a toe bend or anything like that, but you do have some articulation of these claws, which will just fold out like that. So I do really like how those look because as it looks right now, they do kind of already look like little claws as they're folded in. But then if you really wanted to make them look a little bit more dangerous, you can actually fold those out. And that gives you a little bit more claw to work with there. And on that note, it makes a good segue into the weapon. So you have these claw bits here on the side of the arms, a couple of purple stickers on there as well. These are removable too, if you didn't want to have those on there. You just pop that off and pop this connection piece off of the back of the arm. It's pretty tight, so don't think you would ever have to worry about that popping off accidentally. But with that off of there, you do have a hard point there on the back, which is freed up now. We've got our two sword options, which are just going to be all molded in gray here. So those will have a hole in the center. That is for plugging them onto this connection piece here like that. So you can plug them both together onto there. And this will fit right here onto the backpack. So those can be stored on there like so. And your other main weapon is going to be your kunai blades, of which you have six of these. And there's a different ways that you can utilize them. The first way just being as single blades like this. Or you have two of these pieces which will make it look like there's three of them connected together. And there's another option which will allow you to put all six of them together molded as one piece. And what these will do will work together with your hand options like this which have a peg in the center. So then you can just connect this into your peg to make it look like it's holding kind of all three there like that at once or all six if you want to use them that way. For your other hand option parts though, you just have just regular open hands like this, which are a little bit boring to be honest. I wish they were like a cooler, like open handed expression. And then you have just regular holding hands for holding the single swords or the single kunai blades. Then lastly, of course, is this scarf piece, which we'll see how that looks here on the kit in just a second. First, just want to give you a quick size comparison here with your standard 144 scale Gundam model kit. So it's actually a little bit larger than I expected. As you can see, it's a little bit taller and obviously much more bulky than like your standard HG size Gundam. Another thing that I forgot to mention about the kunai blades is that you can place them around on the hard points in the kit, two on the sides of the legs and two on the backpack, so you can store all six of them on there. So it's really cool how that you can store the two swords on the backpack and then all six of the blades around on the kit so you can not necessarily store all the accessories because of course you have your optional parts and hands and stuff and that, all that to the side, but you can store all the weapons on the kit all at once, which is really cool. And I gotta say guys, I'm actually really, really impressed with this kit. I didn't really quite know what to expect going into it and I'm not really into the whole cat theme, but the kit itself is really awesome. It's a lot of fun to play around with. Very solid. Poses really nicely. I wish it would have come with a stand. It didn't include one, so I'm having to use just a Kodobukiya flying stand with this. It's working fine. It plugs into the back. But if you have the swords attached onto the backpack, then you don't have a hard point to plug in a base into that. So you just kind of have to think of which one you're going to want to use. Alternatively, you can just drill a 3mm hole somewhere into like the base of the hips or something like that if you want to make a place for an action base to plug into on this. But you've got really great accessories to work with here, even though all your accessories essentially just 
kind of very basic in what they are. They're just blade and sword type weapons, but you have some really great options for those and like how you might want to actually use them with the kit. So uh, yeah, I'm really happy with this. It's a lot of fun to play around with and just try out lots of different poses. I'm only showing you guys a few poses, but there's certainly more that you can do. I think what would be really awesome with this kit and what I'm going to maybe look into possibly doing with this is to paint it up in like a really super like hyper realistic color scheme because as it is now, it's obviously like very stylized and futuristic, but I think to paint it up in just like a kind of a little more drab or maybe just sort of like a construction yellow kind of color scheme and then just with some weathering around on it, I think it could change the look of it quite drastically and it could look pretty cool. It's just an idea of something you might want to try out with this, something I'm definitely going to consider trying out with this kit. But let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think about it? Are you as impressed as I am with it? Or is it something that you're still just not very interested in? Let me know. If you guys are interested in checking out the kit for yourself, of course, the link to USA Gundam Store will be in the video description. You can check the kit out there. Thank you guys so much for the support. Thanks for checking out the video today. Hopefully that was helpful for y'all. And if you would like to like the video or subscribe, that would also be greatly appreciated. But until next time, I hope you guys are all having a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye, guys.